Good afternoon, space flight enthusiasts, and welcome to a brief angry bulletin today. Uh, today, I'm going to be doing something that I don't often do on this channel, but something that I guarantee that I will do if it's been demonstrated that I was wrong about something, and that is issue a retraction. And in this particular case, it's a retraction about a topic that's been very, very controversial, a topic that has stirred up lots of trouble all the way up to the Oval Office, and this is the matter of the so-called stranded astronauts. And as I've said before, and I will continue to emphasize that in every fundamental respect, these astronauts are indeed stranded. They are powerless to go any place without uh, the assistance of NASA anyway, without a spacecraft. And of course, they do have the option to evacuate. There is a Crew Dragon currently docked uh, specifically for evacuation purposes. Um, also, there's a Soyuz dock. So if they had to evacuate for some reason, they could definitely do that, but they would have to pretty much take the entire crew of the ISS with them, or at least all the Americans on board if they did that. And that, of course, is a completely impractical thing to do. So for the, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is for all practical purposes, they are stranded. But I also reported a number of times that there seemed to be a great deal of evidence to suggest that uh, Suni Williams was suffering from some sort of health-related issue. She was appearing more and more emaciated in number of photographs, and also there was an anonymous report from a NASA administrator who apparently was directly associated with ISS operations, who spoke on condition of anonymity, that she was suffering from some significant weight loss, that NASA was trying to get her to put some weight on, that she wasn't eating the way she needed to, etc., cetera, et cetera. And so I reported on a lot of that, and let me tell you, it's it stirred up a tremendous amount of trouble. Um, we have, of course, uh, President Trump saying that he's instructed Elon Musk to go get the astronauts as rapidly as possible. But as I reported in a live stream that I did not that long ago, this actually doesn't mean any fundamental change from what was already being done. At this stage, it being February, and with the astronauts now scheduled to come back in late March. There's no practical way to get another Crew Dragon up to the ISS any kind of significant time before they're going to be departing anyway. And that would also cost tens of millions of taxpayer dollars to accomplish this. And there's no real compelling reason to do this unless the astronauts' lives or their health is in any kind of danger. And even though I wasn't prepared to accept NASA's official explanation on all of this at first, given some of the visual evidence the emaciated photographs and, and this testimony of an anonymous NASA representative, which may or may not have been valid. Well, I'm here to tell you now at this point that SUNY Williams is in no need of being evacuated. She recently made a very powerful statement with a spacewalk. And let me tell you something, somebody who is capable of doing what she just did, well, her health isn't suffering at all. I would say that she's probably in much better health than I am. And so I'm going to take this opportunity to apologize, to report on all the details, and also to report on how much trouble this whole story has caused. And much of this trouble has been completely unjustified. Today's U.S. spacewalk is spacewalk number 91 on the docket, and that includes NASA astronaut and flight engineer Nick Haig, who you see in front of you with the red stripes on the pants, and commander of Expedition 72, the current expedition aboard the International Space Station, and Sonny Williams.
So the first indication that we got that there was nothing really wrong with Suni Williams' health and that there was no immediate need to rescue her actually came before any of these statements came from President Trump or Elon Musk on January 16th when Suni Williams returned to spacewalking after 12 years stepping outside the International Space Station alongside astronaut Nick Haig, designated as U.S. Spacewalk. 91, the mission performed crucial maintenance and upgrades on the orbital laboratory. Although, to be very clear, it was not absolutely vital that a lot of these tasks be performed, but rather just normal routine. And SUNY Williams was out in space for a considerable amount of time, and then she extended that even further a couple of weeks later. But before we get to that, let's talk about Spacewalk 91. During this spacewalk, the astronauts replaced a rate gyro assembly. They also installed patches on light filters for an X-ray telescope. They replaced a reflector device on a docking adapter. They checked access areas and connector tools for future maintenance on the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. They imaged an ammonia line on the Unity node module. They tested an articulated portable foot restraint on the Z1 truss, Z1 being an actual Russian module, and then they imaged debris strikes on handrails and swapped out a piece of equipment known as the APFR that was having some issues at the time. And as I said, a few of those items might have been very pressing, but the rest were just routine. And if SUNY Williams was suffering from any sort of health-related issues, well, they definitely wouldn't have sent her out for hours to deal with all of that. And then she extended her time in space even further with yet another spacewalk just a few days ago, spacewalk number 92. And in this case, SUNY Williams dismissed any reasonable doubts about her health by staying out in space for another five and a half hours and setting a new record of 62 hours and six minutes, being the longest time that any female astronaut astronaut has ever spacewalked, at least cumulatively, since Peggy Whitson, as a matter of fact, surpassing her record of 60 hours and 21 minutes. Williams is actually the number four astronaut of all time in terms of time spent out in space. An amazing accomplishment, to say the least. Spacewalking this time with her fellow Starliner astronaut Butch Wilmore, the two astronauts performed maintenance work on degraded radio hardware and collected samples from the station's exterior to test for microbes. Again, neither of these tasks were absolutely critical and could have been carried out by the next team to travel to the ISS if there were any problems, but obviously there aren't any problems. NASA airs on the side of caution every time, especially these days after the two shuttle disasters, and as a result, I'm confident that they would not have sent SUNY Williams out on two extended spacewalks, which can be very, very dangerous. As a matter of fact, unacceptably dangerous if somebody was in poor health or suffering from any sort of physical problems. So yeah, in short, they wouldn't have done that if her health was suffering. Now, obviously, the these astronauts were not supposed to be on the ISS for this long. They should only have been there for about a week if everything had gone as planned with Starliner. But guess what? Starliner didn't work. Boeing blew it. And in the meantime, NASA has been trying to make lemonade out of lemons, giving these astronauts important responsibilities that should have been carried out by other NASA astronauts who were scheduled to come up to the ISS, but didn't so that they would have enough seats on a Crew Dragon that was sent up last year to come pick them up. Keep in mind, the rescue ship for these two astronauts is already there. It's already docked with the ISS. I saw it take flight myself from a distance of only three kilometers, by the way. If you'd like to see that live stream, well, I've got it linked at the end of this broadcast. So what they're waiting for is for the replacement crew to come up to the ISS, 
Once that crew arrives, then the existing crew or currently on the ISS can board the crew dragon that's currently docked and make their way back home. And because of delays with the next crew dragon coming up, delays in getting it into service because it's a brand new spacecraft, well, that's delayed their departure again and again until the end of March. Granted, this is a very, very inconvenient thing. No doubt this is having significant consequences with these astronauts' families, with their relationship, with their loved ones. It's not a great situation at all, and it shouldn't have happened, and they never should have sent them up on that malfunctioning piece of garbage that Boeing built, and hopefully this is the end for Boeing Starliner, although, of course, that leaves NASA with no backup spacecraft. If anything happens to Crew Dragon in the future, we could have some seriously stranded astronauts on the ISS or a situation where there are no Americans on the ISS at all, and the station essentially has to be transitioned over to Russian control. Don't think we want any of that either. But in the meantime, this has become a huge political issue, and unnecessarily so. Representative Tim Burchett, who, by the way, was my hero leading the charge on the whole UAP issue and the drone issue, that is, until Trump became president and said exactly the same things that Biden had been saying about these drones. Really no difference in the explanation whatsoever. And since all of that happened, Tim Burchett has gone completely quiet on that issue. Um, so I have some doubts doubts about his integrity on these sorts of things. But nevertheless, he came out and said that we should defund NASA because of things like this. If we defund NASA, it will throw the private space flight industry into complete chaos. There are so many private companies that receive some of their most generous and lucrative contracts from NASA, including SpaceX. This is getting out of control and frankly people like elon musk are not making it any better by blaming this on previous administrations blaming this on nasa the blame belongs to boeing and to boeing alone and this is the only way to solve it and i guarantee you that elon is not going to do anything else than what NASA had already planned in terms of getting these astronauts back. And I must admit, once again, I contributed to all of this nonsense. I'm very sorry that I did. I'll learn from this experience when we're talking about reporting on sensationalistic events in the future. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And also please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Have another exclusive video coming out in the next week or so. Really excited to bring my Patreon supporters some very in-depth content, far more in-depth than my usual stuff. But once again, thanks everyone for watching. And until next time, stay angry about space.